Thank you very much. Um, thank you to the organisers for the invitation. Um, it's honoured, I'm honoured to speak here. Um, so this is joint work uh, crossing two, possibly three projects um, with Arno Fame and the other one with Philip Dittman and Arno Fame. I'll try and make it clear which bit comes from which project. Um, okay, so <coughs> um, we already saw, I think it was in uh, Sammy's talk, the notion of large fields. And I just wanted to, to remind us all that a field is large. We, can, we could use this as a definition. If, an, if it's existentially closed in the language of rings inside the field of formal power series um, over it. And um, perhaps as a sort of idea of a theorem that I want to talk about, um, here's a theorem um, from sort of ongoing work with Arno Fame. Um, I've been cheeky and already written it, sorry, which is that the, the following seven theories are Turing equivalent. Here, Turing equivalence means um, that any one of them is decidable if you're allowed an oracle for any other given one. Okay, so the first theory is the existential theory of Q. Second is the existential theory of the formal power series over Q. The third is the existential theory of the valued fields, the, for, the formal power series over Q with the t-adic valuation. I'm, I'll be a bit more precise later about what language I'm talking about there. The fourth is the existential theory of the same thing with an additional constant symbol for T, which is a uniformizer. The fifth is the existential theory of large fields of characteristic zero. So I mean the common, uh, the existential consequences of the common theory of large fields of characteristic zero, though as was remarked in a previous talk, this, you know, there is a this is, a, this is an elementary class, so this, is, this, is actually, uh, this class is axiomatizable. And the sixth one is the existential theory of large fields, and finally, uh, the existential theory of, of all fields. There's, there's, there are one or two kind of very easy equivalences here. Perhaps the most easy is that two and five are actually the same. So that's a bit, I mean, um, Trying to highlight, that's a, that's a dumb one. They're the same. Um, and one and three are Turing equivalent just by the usual kind of Axe Coach and Yershov principle in equal characteristic zero that we've heard a lot about. OK, so of course, this teases towards talking about the existential theory of Q, teases towards Hilbert's 10th problem for Q, which is the question of whether that existential theory is decidable. but I'm sorry to spoil the punchline. Who, who was it that said this isn't a surprise or this isn't a, this isn't a magic trick? Um, I won't say, I won't be able to resolve anything there definitively, of course. So, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> so, although neither the theory of all Henselian something, something, somethings appear explicitly there, nor prime characteristics appearing explicitly in theorem one, the proof I will describe does go via both of those things. And for context, I'll be speaking about AKE phenomena, Axe-Coaching Yershov principles, uh, which we've heard a lot about, um, so I won't spend too long reminding us of, of, the, of the background, but they might be AKE principles for full elementary theories, elementary equivalents, or they might be for uh, elementary extensions, or existentially closed extensions. And uh, what kinds of contexts have we, uh, do, do we know that these principles exist in? Um, well, of course, um, algebraically closed valued fields or separably closed valued fields. Um, we've got the usual AKE principle in equal characteristic zero. We've got various possibilities in mixed characteristic, um, such as, well, I won't write it out, such as the piadics, piadically closed fields, you know, finite extensions of uh, piadic fields, and beyond um, 
many other things there, and I'll just point towards Philip's talk tomorrow. Uh, talk. Okay, another context where we know AKE principles are the, the tame valued fields. I'm pointing towards Franz Victor Kuhlmann's theorems there. Uh, and separably tame, okay, and there are a number of uh, contexts related to that. And um, perhaps one last sort of general setting, we saw the sort of perfectoid AKE results from the talk of um, Costas. And I'm not, not attempting to give any kind of uh, definitive list here. Okay, so, but we're missing uh, any kind of comprehensive understanding in equal characteristic P. So this talk will focus on existential Axe and Yershov principles, predominantly thinking about equal characteristic P, despite the conclusion not explicitly talking about equal characteristic P. Okay. So, let me go into section two, although one was unnamed. Um, existential theories of Henselian equal characteristic valued fields. Okay, so the motivating problem that I Want to, want to raise is we want to understand this theory, theory of the field of Laurent series over a finite field, and what about maybe understanding fragments of that theory, namely the existential fragment. And there's a theorem from 2003 Due to Deneff and Chalton's which says if you assume resolution of singularities and positive characteristic then the L ring uh, T theory, sorry, the sorry, the existential L ring T theory of this field is decidable. And I'll say I'll say a little bit more about that later. But as motivation, um, this kind of raises the question, um, what about without what about without this extra constant symbol here? So to be precise, let's let L val be, it, be the usual three sorted. language or valued fields which includes a sort for the, the main field, the residue field, the value group together with the valuation map and the residue map and let um, H E prime denote the L val theory of Henselian plus equicharacteristic plus non-trivially valued. Of course. <laughs> why, does it, what do you mean without T? I mean, why do you call it part of the language? Or what do you mean by without T? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to draw a distinction. I'm trying to say, this theorem is about the existential theory in a language with T, and I'm trying to say, what about if we look at just the 
lead up to the no, usual. Be yeah, exactly. And I'm, I'm posing a question which I'll shortly answer. <laughs> okay. Um, let HE prime denote the, your favorite, if you like, your favorite theory of value, uh, language of, sorry, start again. <laughs> Let HE prime denote the theory of Henselian equal characteristic non trivially valued fields in L val, which for the sake of for the sake of being precise, I've said is this three sorted language here, but in fact you could choose the one sorted language with uh, um, with a unary predicate. So this theory is the this theory certainly is easy to write down. It's um, recursively axiomatizable. Let's write, let's write HE prime R for HE prime plus some axioms that say my residue field models R, and that's for any L ring theory R. And I'll give you a proposition is from project with Arno that the existential theory of a model of, of HE prime is axiomatized by HE prime and then you specify just the existential part of the residue fields theory there. A couple of remarks. A couple of remarks. Um, <clears throat> we can replace the existential quantifier there by universal quantifier, or if we like, by, I don't have a good symbol for this, maybe a slash e, the Boolean combinations of existential formulas. Okay. So this is a kind of, this gives us a kind of um, existential Axe-Coach and Yershov principle, um, but note that I haven't had to specify anything at all about the value group. That's not too surprising because non-trivial ordered abelian groups all have the same existential theory, and that existential theory um, is very nice, and indeed it's, it's decidable. I didn't actually practice with this, did I? Let's see. Okay. It's a bit slower than I thought. All right. Okay, so this kind of gives a, as a um, as a kind of corollary, you get um, that you know such a model of um, H E prime is existentially decidable if and only if the residue field is existentially decidable. <clears throat> and um, corollary, the existential theory of these Laurent series fields over finite fields as valued fields is, is decidable. Okay, and I phrase this as a, as a, does something is decidable if and only if something else is decidable? Um, that's, how, that's how we kind of thought of it back then. But maybe now, and in this talk, I'd like to emphasize that some kind of stronger equivalence. It's uh, a Turing equivalence, or it's even more, it's a many-one equivalence, if you, if you know what that is. But for now, I just want you to think, one is decidable if and only if the other is, or if, you're really, if you really prefer Turing equivalences, that they're Turing equivalent. Again, I stress the value group doesn't appear because the theory of the existential theory of value groups is uh, is decidable. Okay, um, I won't say too much about the proof of 
that proposition, that kind of key proposition or its conclusion, the theorem, um, except that it uses, um, it uses embeddings of arbitrary models of HE prime into tame valued fields and using various uh, AKE principles for tame valued fields, you can pull down between different models and Okay, so we use, we use tame valued fields as a kind of scaffolding for, for, for the family of models of HE prime. Okay, so there's a useful reformulation of, um, of at least the, the, the proof, which I'll, I'll think I'll call monotonicity, which is that for two models of HE prime, if the existential theory of one residue field is contained in the existential theory of the other, then the existential theory of one valued field is contained in the existential theory of the other. Let me remark that this backwards direction is not very interesting. It's true, but it's not as interesting because the residue field theories are in a, in a way that preserves existential formulas, existential sentences. They are easily interpretable in, the, in each valued field. <coughs> okay. Next thing. So a couple of extra comments, which... Uh, only, only sort of occurred to us more recently all this all this um, transfer of existential theories from residue fields to to, to Henselian valued fields which I emphasize for now is just in the language of valued fields with no extra no extra constants um, the it all it all works for the existential n fragment by which I mean positive combinations conjunctions disjunctions of existential sentences each of which has n or at most n existential quantifiers. So all these embeddings kind of respect sub, you know, one substructure generated by n things should go to, should, should be able to, you know, one writes down a criterion for when, a, for when an en theory passes from one structure to another. And it's, of course, in terms of embedding substructures generated by a certain number of elements and so on. So all these arguments about embedding, extending embeddings between residue fields to embeddings of valued fields kind of works when you insist that when you, when you, when you look at just, or when your hypothesis is that you can do this for n, n element generated subfields of the residue field. And there's just another sort of fun corollary of, um, of, uh, I think pr pretty much of that proposition there is that for each, for a given field K, there are at most three theories, existential theories, like this, for, For the various valuation, for the various equicharacteristic Henselian non-trivial valuations on K. So that's to say, for the various ways of expanding K to a model of HE prime. This is not, te you know, terribly. Um, this is not anything particularly new from the from the previous work. One just um, rem recalls that there is this sort of tree picture for the Henselian valuations. And either you're in the setting where your field admits some Henselian valuation with a separably closed residue field, in which case 
everything somehow has a separately closed subfield, every residue field has a separately closed subfield, or you're not in that case, and this lower portion of the tree is, is void, at which point everything in the middle has the same existential theory and possibly the, possibly the canonical Hensilian valuation does something a bit different. Okay. <clears throat> so that's, that's the story for existential theories of valued fields, no uniformizers, no uniformizer around. Let me say something now about the uniformizers. So I mentioned earlier the, uh, the donev schoutens theorem. Let's return to it. So what does it say? <clears throat> Um, a stronger theorem that they prove is um, resolution of singularities in positive characteristic implies that um, for R, an excellent discrete Henselian valuation ring with uniformizer Hi. the existential theory of R together with pi is decidable relative to the existential theory of its residue field. Okay, there's a few things I should explain there. So firstly, um, I'm not going to get too deep into the geometry. I'm definitely not, not an expert on that. But um, excellent here is, uh, um, if, if you prefer to think of valued fields, it's really the same as saying that the field of fractions is a separable sub-extension of its completion. Um, that's, that's certainly the way I'm trying to think of it. Um, resolution in denev schoutens is resolution by blow-ups. Um, and what's one thing that's kind of interesting from, from, when, um, from when we had a look at this theorem is that this assumption of excellence seems to really, seems to really disappear. Um, one, can, one can do without it. So I'll just, I'll just kind of verbally outline what they do. Um, first things first, so given their R, their valuation ring, Deciding the positive existential sentences in the language of rings, but with this extra, with this extra uniformizer, that's something you can just do with a kind of effective form of art in approximation. So it's the, that's for positive existential sentences. For existential sentences where one is allowed to assume that the associated variety is um, is sufficiently regular, then it's also something that's a Basically a, matter of, basically a matter of Hensilianity. And the third step, of course, is to use resolution to transform your arbitrary existential sentence into something that's related to a sufficiently regular variety. OK, maybe I'll switch back to this side. <clears throat> OK. So what I want to say next is we wanted to, and this is in, this is in the, the second project with, with Philip and Arno, we wanted to kind of dig into this theorem and see what was really needed from this assumption. We basically want to get rid of it, although we can't entirely. We want to replace it with something, something a bit weaker potentially. So let me outline what that is. OK. <clears throat> let me outline what that is. So we introduced a different hypothesis, which we called R4, which says the following. 
every large field K is existentially closed in every um, extension L of K that admits a K rational K place. If you want, you might as well look at finitely generated such extensions. So resolution of singularities um, implies local uniformization. I don't think I have time to get into even giving a statement of that. And local uniformization implies R4. Um, if, um, for, so for this argument, it's really about embedding um, in, well, it's, there's, a, there's a paper of Arno in which, um, in which he proves that um, you know, when, you have a, when you have a sufficiently smooth point, then the function field over k of that, sufficiently, on that variety with a sufficiently smooth point embeds into a, a large field of sufficiently high transcendence degree. And, um, well, that might as well be the Laurent series over, over k. So that's, um, that's why you can, I mean, so with this assumption, that's why uh, L can be embedded over K into K double brackets T. And if K is assumed large, then, then K must in particular be existentially closed in L. So that's a rough um, sort of indication of why local uniformization implies R4. Worth noting, um, R4 holds already for, un it holds unconditionally for perfect large fields, in particular in characteristic zero, which sort of explains perhaps a lot of the um, sort of, well, just explains why things are a lot easier for us. So let me now give a, give a statement of our, um, I'll hesitate to say improvement, but uh, our version of this theorem here. So theorem, so this is from a joint project with Philip as well. Okay. <clears throat> Suppose R4 And let, let L val together with the constant symbol pi be exactly what you think. It's L val adjoined a new constant symbol uh, pi. Uh, so it's an expansion by one constant symbol. Let's let H E pi then be the theory of Henselian non-trivial equicharacteristic valued fields where the symbol pi is interpreted by a uniformizer. So that's H E prime plus pi is a uniformizer. <coughs> and as before, H E R, H E pi R is he pi plus the residue field models r. I see I wrote the, the, word, theorem, the word theorem too soon, didn't I? All right, well, what's the statement? <clears throat> the statement is, so we take a model So we take some Encelian equicharacteristic with the uniformizer. Its existential theory is axiomatized by the existential theory of the residue field plus plus the obvious axioms, the HE, the HE pi part. 
Okay, and where did excellence go? Excellence disappeared in this theorem, but it does reappear in a slightly stronger version of this theorem, which works over a subfield um, of constants, a sort of um, Z, an actual honest Z-valued subfield of constants. If we, if we try to make the same kind of theorem uh, about the existential theory, including constants from some Z-valued subfield, and then over here it would have to be over a residue field with the appropriate extra constants, then that valuation ring on that of, for that constant subfield ought to be excellent. So that's kind of where the excellence reappears. Okay, so let's talk through some consequences of this theorem. First, I'd better clean one of these boards. Let's put that up. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, so some consequences of this. We've got this axiomatization statement, so we can pull out a decidability transfer. So the existential theory of any one of these models, oh, I'd better say assume R4, of course, the top of this theorem. The existential theory of this is decidable relative to, and again, feel free to think of Turing equivalence or many one equivalents. That's decidable relative to the existential theory of the residue field. And again, we could replace E by A or by these Boolean combinations of existential sentences if we prefer. And again, the value group doesn't appear. I also want to indicate there are some related results of Cartes. Um, which I think appear in his, I don't know where he is, but I think appear in his thesis. And I think are conditional on local uniformization. Do correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So, um, Okay, so um, a little remark from um, earlier, well, a little, a little earlier remark that we had, which can relate to this, is that the existential theory of, um, let's, let's return to the, the case of a finite residue field. The existential theory of, of this as a, valued field with the uniformizer is decidable relative to the A1E theory of just the valued field itself. <clears throat> okay, so let me just let me just kind of put this in context. So we've we've been looking at existential theories of these these things with the uniformizer, and earlier I was talking about these things without. And if you just allow yourself one extra universal quantifier on the front, then that's really the same problem. And of course, I should be a bit careful here. What what do I really mean here? And again, I mean positive combinations of honest sentences, which are of the shape one A quantifier, then a bunch of E's, right? I'm not saying in its prenex form it would better be of this shape. Okay, <clears throat> hopefully that's clear. Oh, and why is this the case? Why? Well, that's because um, the image of T 
in this, in this field, or well, one of the reasons this is true, is the image of T under all possible um, field or valued field endomorphisms is everything in the maximal ideal except zero. So really you can, you know, some, somehow T, uh, when you're talking about existential things, T looks like almost every element. In, you know, in the maximum ideal, then you have to worry about inverses and so on, but that's one of the, that's one of the ingredients. Could, could you say that again? Well, every, yeah, so every, every generator, every uniformizer is an automorphic image of T. But these are, yeah, these are related things. Um, <clears throat> okay, and perhaps I didn't make it explicit, but, you know, the corollary here is that R4 implies this existential theory is, is decidable. Okay, now I just wanted to say a word or two about the, the proof of this, but I'll, I'll just speak that for the, for the sake of time. Um, and by this, I really mean the, the theorem written there, that, that this theory H e pi, where you fix the residue field's existential theory, that that axiomatizes the full existential theory of, of your valued field with a uniformizer. The proof of that roughly has, in my mind, three parts to it. One is some sort of classical um, complete discrete valuation ring structure theory. One is something, one is, one thinks about sections of residue maps, basically underlying many of these arguments about building embeddings between valued fields is um, the ability to take a Henselian equal characteristic valued field and simply pass to some sufficiently saturated elementary extension in which one has a full section of the residue map, a, you know, a, a ring embedding of the residue field such that uh, it's a right inverse, I think, of the residue map. That's, um, that's just very useful because in doing so, one gets, and I'll just sort of, you know, if, if what one, one can, assuming certain saturation, one can then usually embed something like this back into, back into this. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a kind of big tool in this, um, in this argument. So one, one passes to some elementary extension, finds a copy of this inside here in the appropriate way compatible with the residue map, then you pick your, you know, that's a formal T, I'm, I'm somehow living outside, pick, pick an element there, send it to your uniformizer, Henselianity does the rest. And then finally, the, final, the, the kind of final ingredient in that is that the image of this in here will be existentially closed in here, well, that, that'll be an existentially closed extension, by R4. Because this is a Henselian valued field, and Henselian implies large. That's, I mean, I think I should refer to Pop, Pop's paper in 96 for that. So, Henselian, that's Henselian, it's large, it goes in here, one needs another Delicate. One needs another little argument about passing to a. Okay, I'll speed up. Um, <laughs> one passes to a. You know, as as long as one has a little bit more saturation, then you can ensure that this, um, the 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 place there is a place back down onto this, or in fact, the power series, which is very similar. I won't say anything more about that too precisely. Let me now pick up, if I may, the... <laughs> I'm a non-believer, but this is... Okay, let me also pick on, up on this theme of monotonicity again. If I, if I can... If I can um, <clears throat> sort of go back to the story, Without the uniformizer, we proved this axiomatization theorem, got decidability transfer, and later noticed this 
perhaps useful reformulation in terms of monotonicity. If one existential theory is contained in the other on the residue side, then the existential theory is contained in the other on the valued field side. And we get the same, we get the same here, really. For k, v, pi, k, and l, w, pi, uh, l models, if the existential theory on the residue side one is contained in the other, then same thing on the valued field side. And I should be clear that this also depends on R4. <clears throat> so that monotonicity property turned out to be, to my mind, a kind of useful reimagining. I mean, it's nothing, it's, it's the same thing, the same game we always play, you know, when you want to think about quantifier elimination, you argue that, you know, the quantifier free type of things determines the full type. Well, this is kind of the same, except when you don't have a negation in your fragment, in that case, it would be the quantifier free formulas, you do have negation. Here we have the existential sentences, we don't have negation. So it's some, somehow it's useful to think in terms of monotonicity rather than equality. And let me now try to explain a more recent part of this project. Okay, so in a more recent part of this project um, with, with Arno, we were thinking about this monotonicity property and um, it kind of made us realize that um, we, 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 could, we could draw some quite nice conclusions from it, which I'll state in a second, but I'll state them, I'll state them just for these two theories I've been talking about, he prime and he pi, though I want to emphasize that it really is some kind of abstract thing you can talk about based on a theory that satisfies this kind of monotonicity property with respect to some interpreted structures. So, so section four, now arbitrary residue theory. So I'll explain this in terms of these two theories, H e prime and H e pi. So let F be the theory of fields. <clears throat> Theorem. <clears throat> let H be one or other of these two things. And in the second case, suppose R4. So if, if second case, we assume R4. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, yeah, and perhaps also let L be the language of H, right? So it's, it's either with the constant or without. That's, that's all that means. So there is a recursive... There exists some kind of recursive elimination function, epsilon, which takes an existential sentence in this language L and returns an existential sentence in the language of fields, or rather rings, C. 
such that k, uh, sorry, I should have also perhaps said, you know, curly k will mean a model, so that I don't have to tell you whether it does or doesn't have a constant. k models phi, if and only if, the residue field models this eliminated version. So this is some kind of elimination. I should emphasize we're talking about sentences, existential sentences, not, not formulas at present. Um, and here again, existential sentences. So it's, you know, it's not giving you any kind of you know, quantify elimination, anything like that. But it's saying that we can get rid of the valued field and the, and the, and the value group sort, um, at least with, with respect to existential sentences. And that's for all, for all curly K models of of H. Second point, as long as you add in the theory F of fields, the existential consequences of a given ring theory R a Turing equivalent, again in fact one can say something a bit stronger, are Turing equivalent to the existential consequences of um, H with R on the residue field. Again, one can actually put the existential there as well. One has to put it in both places. I won't say more about that now. So that's for all R ring theories. So this is a kind of uniform across incomplete residue theories version of the previous decidability transfer thingies. And in particular, um, the existential theory of any, any one of these models is exactly the existential, the existential consequences of H with the existential consequences of the theory of KV on the residue field. That's again for any curly K -er model. And the proof idea really, uh, this point is, um, you know, it's, 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 it's about the separation lemma. It's about the separation lemma, it's about compactness. Using this monotonicity, um, you, you can see that the, the, the hypotheses of the separation lemma are, are fulfilled, and one can check that if your base theory, which these two are, if your base theory is recursively axiomatizable, then your somehow elimination function can be chosen recursively as well. Um, <clears throat> okay, again we could replace E by A or these Boolean combinations in this theorem as long as we do it consistently. Um, okay, I think that's all I wanted to say about, about the, the theorem itself. Um, and hopefully I just have a little time in which to explain some consequences and justify that theorem I wrote down at the beginning. Okay, I'll do one more board wipe I think. Any questions so far? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I could, I could put this one in or or leave it out. It's the same. Could you say that once more? You cannot write H epsilon of theory of epsilon q, uh, union theory of epsilon q. Um, I think the that's the wrong direction. Outside, right? um, well, the epsilon is translating from the valued fields language into the ring language. Mm -hmm. Of course, one interprets in the other direction. Um, D depending on exactly what language of valued fields you've chosen, that's either sort of trivial or it's a simple, or it's simple. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, let's say let's let's just quickly uh, talk about some consequences. So if I may write, so for so for um, a theory um, R of fields. Write um, R P for 
R plus the axioms characteristic P, so that's for, for P a prime or for P zero, and I'll write uh, P greater zero for the um, for the intersection of all these. Um, sorry, I should say for the deductive closure of this. Sorry, deductive closure of R plus characteristic equals P. So one can form the common theory of the positive characteristic um, models of a theory R of fields. And one can look at the sort of greater, greater zero part being the what you would, what you would imagine. It's the um, it's the uh, sufficient, th this is true in all sufficiently large positive characteristic um, models of the theory. So it's just some notation, hopefully almost self-explanatory. Okay, so some corollaries of, this, of the theorem above this theorem in which we get this elimination, you get, for example, um, H E prime in characteristic P. Well, that's nothing more than the existential, that's nothing more than um, the, the, uh, the theory of characteristic P, equicharacteristic non-trivially valued fields. The existential consequences of that are precisely the existential theory of uh, FP double brackets T, that's decidable, that's, but that's not a new theory. H, uh, uh, non-trivial, non-trivially valued. H E prime positive characteristic, common theory, existential fragment, also decidable, because we have this elimination down to the residue fields uniformly, it doesn't matter that it's an incomplete theory now, and that's effectively by Axe's theory of finite fields, because the common theory of finite fields is decidable. Likewise, HE prime greater greater zero existential quantifier, decidable for basically the same reason. And using a rather sort of kind of easy algorithm to move between knowing things almost always and always and for all, fi for all finite characteristics, one gets that H, uh, H E prime existential consequences is then Turing equivalent to H E prime characteristic zero existential consequences. <clears throat> okay, and it's worth noting that Excuse me, that's equal to the existential theory of Q double brackets T as a valued field, like that. So now it's sort of this first theorem I mentioned is coming into view. We also have um, H E uh, pi zero E. So that's with the parameter for the uniformizer, it, but in characteristic zero, where hypotheses work, right? Existential consequences, that's Turing equivalent to the existential theory of Q because, well, in equal, in equal characteristic zero, the usual X coaching theorem applies. And so with a few more, I'm running a little short on time, so, but with a few more, uh, sort of simple deductions from this, uh, from this main theorem, um, one, one gets closer to proving that first theorem there. And I'll just outline the proof of one or two of those things now. So um, let's go back to this proof. Okay, so back to theorem one. I need to convince you that some, or hopefully all of these things are Turing equivalent. I've told you that two equals five. It's an equation one shouldn't write too often. Um, 
All right. Um, and in fact, that was already noted, I think, by Sanders in 1996, who also relates to us that Weisfenning, judiciously abbreviated, um, in 76 proved, and I don't fully understand that argument because it goes via some other sorts at various points, but nevertheless, that five is decidable relative to one. Let's just look. Five over there is the existential theory of large fields of characteristic zero. One is equivalent to three. That's AKE in characteristic zero, zero, right? Because we know, we know that there's an existential version of the usual AKE theorem in equal characteristic zero. And don't forget, Z has a decidable decidable theory as, a, as an ordered abelian group. <clears throat> OK. Um, one and um, one and four are equivalent. Again, uh, perhaps there are several ways of seeing that, but you could use, um, perhaps it's a little, perhaps the, I mean, I'm sure there are other ways of going about this, but one could go to the, uh, the theorem up there on the, what's now the middle board, um, but noting that these are, this strong assumption of R4 is just true in characteristic zero. So um, either use an AKE with a uniformizer or just say, um, you know, R4 true in characteristic zero. Two and three, why are they equivalent? Um, well, that's about going between, um, sorry, what do I mean there? Two and three is, uh, one and four. two and three are Q double brackets T with and without the valuation explicitly. And the reason for that is, well, in one direction, it's a, it's a simple redux. And in the other direction, the valuation ring, Q double square brackets T, is both E and A definable in the, in the field. And one can see that with some explicit formulas. And um, I think we showed that in a, an earlier paper. Almost finally, um, five and six are equivalent because um, I didn't quite manage to get to this, but the, the, the theory of um, the theory of Henselian valued fields, if you take the reduct to the ring language, you find the theory of, uh, sorry, let me start that again. These existential theories of Henselian valued fields, the existential theories, if you take the reduct to the ring language, you find the existential theories of uh, large fields. So the reduct of this theory is precisely the um, existential theory of large fields in characteristic P and here greater than zero characteristic large fields and, and so on. So because of that, um, it's, really, it's, really this, uh, it's really this equivalence here, but taking a reduct to the language of rings that gives you five is uh, Turing equivalent to six. And one is equivalent to seven for basically the same reasons, except this time we're uh, using this equivalence directly and applying the um, applying this theorem and going via the fact that both um, f greater zero uh, e and f greater greater zero e are decidable by axis theorem as always <coughs> okay I think I'll stop there I have a question. You said R4 is known for perfect. What are class, other classes of fields where R4 is known? Uh, hmm, great question. Um, 
I'm not sure I know the answer. I'm not sure I know any other classes. I'm sorry, perhaps, perhaps someone else has a better answer? PAC? No, but this is for... That's a good point. That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> Anyone has a question? Okay, so, yeah. oh, sorry, ah, okay, so no, um, hi. So, do we know that the ex then the existential theory of every number of you are the same? Turing equivalent. Um, uh, Turing equivalent. Yeah. I don't think we do know that. Uh, I don't have the answer off the top of my head, I'm afraid. For all number, for any number field? Yes, so what, what's different between Q and QHI of Q of S by Q? Um. <coughs> well, certainly Q is definable in there, but I don't know the complexity of that. I'm sure other people do. <laughs> right. Why can't you run the whole ask argument with Q square root 2? Well, I mean, I think I think there are I think we could do a lot of it with with other with other base fields for sure. Um, I don't I don't have a good answer for you. I mean I think um, of course of course we'd have to modify every single every single case, but I I'm, I'm sure one can do it analogs. I mean you simply wouldn't be looking at the class of all. You know, fields of characters zero. You'd be looking at ones above that. You'd have the same thing. You know, if you started with one, if you wanted to only consider extensions of a fixed number field, you would still get, you would get a sort of equivalences between the, let's say it's called K between K double brackets T existential theory and, and the existential theory of K itself. That's that's for sure. Um, as to how that relates to the large fields, I don't know. Large fields with a certain algebraic part, maybe. Okay, so no more questions. So we can thank, uh, thank the speaker. Again. <laughs>